Hi, this is Lauren Cheek from Lornacopia. I had to chime in because over the past uh, 16 hours, I had absolutely the worst attempted travel experience that I have ever had. So let me just lay it out for you. I had a friend. He wanted to go to St. Joseph's, Missouri from <clears throat> Atlanta. So I booked him a Greyhound. The only reason why I booked Greyhound, I had thought about flying, I had thought about an Amtrak, I thought about several other things, is it was the trajectory of who was picking him up. They would have had to have driven an hour to Kansas City, Missouri from St. Joseph's to pick him up. And I wanted to get him in the city where they lived and just let them pick him up, right? So I go online, I'm looking all week, you know, and uh, I decide to look at tickets, what time of day would be the best. I needed to do this on my days off. Uh, so I was off yesterday and today. Um, so I get together with him yesterday. We're all ready. Pick him up, bring him by the house. We make sure all the luggage is weighed and everything's correct. And I had booked a what I thought uh, was a bus trip that took out or took away from Atlanta at 12 o'clock p.m. I had researched parking, all that kind of stuff. How long was it going to take me? I'd done that over several days at that time of night, different times of the day while I was free. <clears throat> anyway, long story short, I drive him there, and we've got an online ticket, which I've already paid for. It was about $184, somewhere around there. Um, that would take him directly through four exchanges to <clears throat> St. Joseph's, Missouri, directly from Atlanta. So four bus changes. Uh, I get down to where my GPS is directing me, which is supposed to be the bus station, and it was, and turn the corner, and there's a club on the left, and... I turn left to go try to find this parking, supposedly, that they have. And I'm only on one little street, but it's in the worst part of Atlanta, like a horrible part of Atlanta. Um, and then out in front of the bar, people are standing outside. There's like probably 40 people, and there's a liquor store or something like that next to it. They're standing out there. I can already see people sitting on the sidewalk or homeless people sleeping on the sidewalk. Um, the building is under construction apparently has been for years from my understanding of other people um there's no clear entrance into parking so and and then the whole building sort of semi-barricaded with tape and fences so you don't even know where you're supposed to go in <clears throat> so i almost turn into i actually did start to turn into where the buses come out and of course this guy is yelling at me to not go that way well, this looks like it would be the obvious place to pull in and find a parking deck, which is what I'm expecting. There is no parking deck. So anyway, long story short, I pull in front of the side of the building where all these barricades are, where there are people laying on the sidewalk, sleeping and stuff like that. Uh, then a, I, me and my buddy get out and we're getting ready to unload his luggage. And then some random woman who may have worked there or may have not, but with all the homeless people around, she looked like she was homeless. She was not a very good communicator. She didn't tell me that she was a parking attendant. Uh, the sign up ahead said it was metered parking. There were no parking meters uh, or any way to pay for parking. So she's yelling at me like, you can't park here. So I'm like, okay, I get into the car. I'm like, where's parking? And she goes up there to the left. Well, this parking was $15, very close by. But it was a $15 parking deck for me to drop somebody off for like, you know, 20 minutes before their trip out of town. Anyway, so I couldn't tell if she was panhandling or working there. This is no joke. It was that bad and the area was that bad. So I pull into a parking lot right next door where there is an old man sleeping in a parking spot. And there's people sitting in the the bushes and everything, probably five or six people, except for him. Two on the sidewalk walking, walking up, and then all the people uh, at the bar and the liquor store hanging out outside. There's a lot of commotion going on, and there's a lot of construction and visual clutter. So I parked there. I paid the, the uh, automatic you know teller, uh, put the thing in my window, and as I'm doing that and get out of the car, someone's yelling at me across that parking lot 
hey, you know, you shouldn't have paid. Like, you pay $15. Like, he's really exasperated. Like, I should have been paying for parking in front of the building, but I don't know who these people are. And I'm like, I don't really care. I need to get this guy to his bus on time. So anyway, that was the first part of the uh, extreme bizarre. So I walk past the building. Every door is locked. Everything's barricaded. I come to the side of the building where I almost turned in. I suddenly see a ramp. I walk up the ramp. There's like 10 doors or something like that. And a girl that happens to be sitting there on top of her suitcase says, go all the way to the end. All the other doors are locked. So I'm like, okay, so you got all these doors to this building and you can only take one out. So in and out. So I go in with my friend. Uh, we've got his luggage. We've got everything ready. We have our itinerary. And I present it to the woman at the desk because I'm trying to figure out um, where, which line to get in. And there's just a jumble of people. There are no clearly marked doors. There's no signage that tells you what the destination or departure is. Um, so I ask her where we're supposed to be. And we tell her what bus, you know, where we're going and what time we're, we're supposed to leave which was 11.59 uh, p.m. I mean, yeah, 11.59 p.m., 12 o'clock a.m. We were supposed to be on that bus. So this is on Monday night. Anyway, so she looks at the ticket, the online ticket, and the time that we're saying we're trying to get on the bus, she's just come on shift. She was very nice and polite, but she was the only one working the desk. So I'm relying on her to get this friend of mine on the bus in time after I've just walked through all this like crazy insanity and getting into the building, which was crazy insanity. So anyway, um, she looks at her ticket and she goes, Oh, this is not for tonight. This is for tomorrow at 12 o'clock. So I'm like thinking like, Oh, I'm a blonde, you know? <laughs> and I booked it like, you know, on my day off, but you know, it was the only thing available for that night or that day, as far as I could tell, and, you know, it's, maybe a hundred dollars cheaper than a, a cheap flight, but it got him directly to where he was going. Anyway, so she tells us we're there at the wrong time. So we leave, we're having a conversation on the way home, kind of joking about all the crazy. Uh, get home, I wake him up in the morning and uh, everybody's saying goodbye to him, you know, cause he's going out for a job. Suppose, you know, yeah, that was the whole ideal. He's gonna have to put that off. <laughs> but anyway, um, we head back to the bus station. So this is the second time I'm going to the bus station. And when I get there, there's somebody in an actual vest telling me to park in front of the building because I was going to park in the same $15 parking lot. Yeah, because that just seems like what's going on. And I didn't make all the mistakes I did the night before. And there aren't as many people on the streets and everything hanging out just randomly. So I uh, park in front and he tells me to pay him $5, you know, which is I was like, okay, yeah. Sounds legit or not. I don't know. I just want to get in here and get this guy another ticket. Because what had happened before I came for the second time is he called me and he said that the bus left without him. Well, I had to call the Greyhound station to make sure that's what happened. And I give them my number, my reservation number. And then they tell me, oh, that was the the bus that left last night at 12 o'clock. And I'm like, I came in and asked your, you know, employee to look at my ticket to tell me which door to go to. And she told me we were there at the wrong time. So I left and I came back. Um, this is what I'm having the conversation on the phone. And he's like, well, unfortunately, um, you know, you have to buy a whole new ticket. But now I'm sitting there thinking, like, now I'm getting into, like, close to $400 with this because somebody just happened to mislead me, um, and we were there on time. We were there on time. The second time, I actually dropped LeMay off because the second time, because I did not. So this is the third time when I go in in person uh, where I paid the attendant. The second time, I just dropped him off at the block right where we were supposed to walk in. I'm like, hey, good luck, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he calls me by the time I've gotten back home. Um, and then I called the station and this is what was happening with that so this the guy told me like unfortunately because it's booked online blah 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 um you have lost that money you know it's like you spent that ticket and we can't refund it or exchange it and i'm like well this sounds like major bs to me you know 
especially under the circumstances of what happened. Um, so I'm not a Karen. I think if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know this. Um, I am not the kind of person that goes all the way to the top. It's just, this was a situation where I'm like, I obviously have been in this location and people here are not really up on their job. And, uh, you know, it's kind of chaotic. Uh, they don't tell you when to get on buses. They don't give you destinations. They really don't even know, you know, how to read a ticket apparently. Um, and neither do I, but I'm the customer and I bought the ticket and you're supposed to tell me, you know, because you're the professional. That's my attitude. Someone else might be buyer beware. Unfortunately, you lost out. And I'm like, that's fine. But there are some issues here, major issues with this company. So I had come back. I called him and then I called the corporate office, which is in Dallas. And it was the same thing. Very polite, quick call time, which was nice. So I didn't have to like spend a long time on wait to find out that I had lost my money and that this whole effort was just lost, uh, not my own fault because I was there both times on time. Um, so I uh, go back to pick up my friend. And then that was when he pulled me into the parking lot that I was not supposed to park in the night before. And he's wearing a vest and I know that he's probably working there. So anyway, by the time I get out of the car, my friend is yelling at me and he's had such a bad experience inside the bus station that he's so frustrated. He doesn't even want to try to make this trip anymore. Uh, he's got a headache. And, you know me, I'm, I'm ticked off because I've talked to two people and I've lost $184. I think it was or 181, something around there. Um, and not because I was late or not because I missed my bus because I was misinformed by an employee who should be able to tell you those things and direct you somewhere. And there's no direction at this bus stop um, and it's in the hood and it's a scary place to be, honestly. I, I hated actually leaving in there. I was just like, you're gonna be out of here soon. Well, anyway, um, so when I go back, we have a quick conversation on by the car. He's like, you shouldn't have paid for parking. I'm like, dude, you know, what's going on? I said, I'm trying to get you another ticket tonight so you can go where you need to go. You know, and if I lost that money, I lost that money. And he's like, no, I don't, you know, yeah. You know, you don't need to spend any more money on this. It's like so frustrating. I, you know, so I was like, well, we'll look into it, you know, in a week's time, if you can keep everything set up or maybe two weeks time and maybe I'll fly you out or send you on an Amtrak somewhere where we can actually get there. <laughs> so literally we never even got on the bus. <clears throat> they don't tell you what buses to be on. They can't read your ticket for you or help you with your tickets they can't get you where you need to go and if there's a mistake like this which obviously it was um on who the professionals part should have been they will not refund or exchange or let you use that for a different ticket but even like these circumstances were so frustrating to me because it's like i made it through here i made it through past the homeless people i made it through all the yelling from three different people <clears throat> i got him into the building 20 minutes before he had to leave and i go to a clerk for help and i am told something that is completely wrong so because of this, because of the lack of refund or exchange, because of all the frustration, I decided to take to social media to actually say something about this, which is something I never, ever do. And uh, all I can say is that this was really a horrible experience. He didn't get wh where he needed to go. I lost out on money. I've been writing bad reviews online, which I never, ever, ever have done in my life because it was just that bad. Everything about it was chaotic, disorganized. Uh, the area was scary. And I basically, one of my reviews says, I, I would like a, a refund or an exchange of a ticket at a later time. So, you know, maybe this person can travel with the money that I paid. But that's apparently not their policy and I will never use them again. And I wouldn't have used this this time except for it was door to door from Atlanta to St. Joseph's and airplanes and trains go to Kansas City, which is the next biggest city away. And it's an hour away from where the little city where he wants to go or the smaller city where he wants to go. <clears throat> so there you have it. Horrible. I can't say anything else about it. Like the whole experience was just terrible. I mean, the people on the phone were professional and polite. And the lady at the desk was professional and polite, but wrong. <laughs> and the people at the corporate office or at the bus station itself, especially when told what happened, um, 
had no resolution other than lose more money and take a chance on us again, which I'm like, mm, ultimately, no, no, I will not. There you have it.